The jobless rate numbers, the problem is that is a backwards looking view. What data point are you looking at to really give you insight on the forward view of how damaging this coronavirus really could be on the Japanese economy? Hi, Taylor. Yes, I think looking at the jobless numbers, um, I think, uh, but we, we do expect to see more weakness in jobless numbers in the months ahead, because just as we saw the massive increase in jobless claims in the U.S., the labor market situation in Japan is also quite concerning, because workers in the industries such as uh, tourism, transportation, and retail are actually uh, facing a temporary higher risk of temporary or permanent layoffs. And uh, for the retail sales and industrial production numbers, we expect to see more contraction. We expect to see a drop in retail sales of about 3% in the month of February. And also for industrial production, it's likely to drop by, four, by about 4% year on year in February as well. So talk to me about those retail sales, because here in the U.S., we're having a heavy debate about the retail sales and the shift now to e-commerce. And really, this has sort of been a total death, a lot, of some of these brick-and-mortar companies who do not have an online presence. What does that mean for your world in Japan as you take a look at retail sales and the shift now to e-commerce? Sure. I think uh, looking at the retail sales in Japan, uh, the retail sales is, does face the, uh, a, a sharp contraction after the sales tax hike last uh, last year, and because the, the the retail sales has been declining since uh, the, the sales tax was hiked uh, from eight percent to ten percent in October, and and also given the current coronavirus situation, con consumers are cautious about spending. So I, I, we think that retail sales is likely to face more pressure down the road, and and yes, when we do see a trend that uh, retail sales shifting to online, the digital the digital sales, um, that will help to support some of the uh, declining sales uh, due to the uh, offline channels. Jesse, how damaging ultimately is the deferral or the postponement of the Olympic Games? Because in most other economies, we've been talking about, you know, demand delayed is not demand that's going to be replaced at the end of all this, right? Just because Chinese New Year was essentially cancelled in China doesn't mean that spending then happens six, even 12 months down the track. Is the Olympics and the spending and stimulus that comes with that a unique situation, though? Well, yes, I think, um, well, looking at the current situation, probably a delay in Olympics is much better than a cancellation, right? And just before the, the coronavirus hit uh, the economy, the Olympics was, was hoped to, like, bring the extra boost to Japan's economy and helping to increase consumption and tourism revenues. But, however, looking at the current situation, let's say even if we proceed ahead with the Olympics, it doesn't, it, it won't probably bring the, the influx of the tourists that we, we hope to see. So probably um, I, we think that a delay of the Olympics is, is, much, is much better than a cancellation. Should we see an immediate reduction in the sales tax? Uh, well, we, we think that that will be very politically very difficult because that um, a hike in the sales tax is, is an important step to achieve the long-term goal of restoring the fiscal balance. And if we want, if we cut the tax uh, in like, in immediately and then if we want to raise it again, it will be politically very difficult and also practically very difficult as well. Well, we do want to wait for some of those numbers to come out. Again, retail sales and industrial production. Uh, we do know that within retail sales, um, uh, month over month, the survey is calling for a drop of 1.7% on a year-over-year -year basis, a drop now of 1.5%. We do have numbers coming out on industrial production, month over month, gaining four-tenths of 1%. That's better, actually, than the survey, which was flat. Uh, but year-over-year, -year, you're seeing a drop now of 4.7%. Again, that's an improvement here from the survey estimate of a drop of 4.8 percent. But both of those numbers are a decline uh, from the prior months and the prior uh, uh, year. So again, you're seeing a few numbers come in a little bit better than the survey. Uh, within the retail sales month over month, you're seeing a gain of six tenths of one percent. That is better than the survey estimate, which was looking for a drop of 1.7 percent. And year over year, you're also seeing an improvement in retail sales of 1.7 percent better than a drop here of about one and a half percent. So let me try to come to you for some initial reaction. We've given you a very cool uh, 10 seconds or so to sift through these numbers. Overall, though, the key takeaway is 
it does look a little bit better than some of the survey estimates. Does that give you any hope that they're doing a better job of managing through this than perhaps many economists had estimated? Well, well, we have to bear in mind that uh, these numbers are for the month of February. That's before the Japan imposed uh, the more stringent containment measures, that, such as school closure and quarantine, large scale quarantine measures. So we, we do expect to see more weakness in data points in the months ahead. And looking at the industrial production, it has been under pressure due to the trade tension last year. It has been declining for several months. And now, given the, the coronavirus disrupting the supply chains, we do, we do think that uh, the industrial production is likely to under pressure further in the months ahead. And uh, also the retail sales, um, because due to the uh, cautious sentiment among consumers and businesses, we think that... Um, is probably uh, it, there, there is probably more weakness to come. Jesse, what does this mean for wage growth then in Japan? Well, for wages, I think um, look. If we look at the broad macro picture, though aggregate demand is going to fit into the labor market, and that's, that's likely to result in a higher unemployment rate and lower wages. And also, given the risk that some of the workers are facing the temporary or permanent layoffs, that's, that's also the way on the wage growth as well.